So we don't have quorum right now. We're going to wait for uh, another couple of members to, to hopefully attend. So please be patient. Thank you.
Good afternoon, David Baer. Uh, call the this meeting, the TDC meeting, to order. Uh, July. I mean, yeah. What is today? June twenty first. Sorry, June twenty first. Um, it is approximately three o seven p.m. Um, welcome, uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for your commitment to tourism. Uh, Shauna, will you please call the roll? SR Jeff Bergosh. He's just stepped out. Okay. David Baer. Here. Mary Hoxie. Ronald Rivera. Here. Shirley Cronley. Here. James Reeves. Here. Matish Patel. Jared Moore. Here. And Casey Jones. Do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, we do. Was this meeting properly advertised? Yes, this meeting was advertised on Thursday, June 16th in the Scambia Sun Press. Great, thank you. All right, so uh, the agenda finally was posted today, um, and I apologize for that not getting out sooner. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I'd like to rearrange one thing um, because uh, Stephen Hall, our Office of Budget Management, uh, will be leaving with because of a conflict. So I'd like, if you don't mind, Stephen, if you come up and give a quick presentation on uh, Fund 108 balance sheet, please, on where we are. Good afternoon, Council Members, Stephen Hall, Management and Budget, um, Scamby County. So um, what, what I am going to speak, speak to um, is this leftover balance that ultimately is part of the conversation and decision-making process uh, that the Council is having today. Um, so um, as part of the marketing plan, so Ms. Cronley has provided this to everybody. as part of your backup for today's meeting. So, so these figures um, are in line with our fund balance carry forward um, that is available for, um, for adjustments to reserves and various allocations. So um, I did want to um, just point out a couple of minor changes um, to, to these numbers. So the $11,172,565, there are 
four, four lines of items there, and then it says carry forward to fund 108 for the balance for 22 of 3372565 So if you subtract those four lines immediately under the 11.1 .1 million, you will have 3,300,759. And then if we account for the additional 500,000 for the America's Cup, our updated balance would be 2,800,759 that would still be available. Also, I would like to point out, just because there are some restrictions between the various pennies for, for various activities um, that we can do, um, so on the public facilities restricted reserve, the 3.5 million that is indicated there, um, of the carry forward, we still have 2,387,985 available to go toward the public facilities restricted reserve. And for the other, uh, we have already accounted for the unified budget distribution of 1,371,806. One more time. It's at the top. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is right under the... Uh, I see it. Right, yes, sir. Um, the remaining portions uh, are coming from, would come from the first three pennies, potentially, and we have 7,409,258 ultimately available to address these and then anything that is not uh, as, as part of the marketing reserve plan would be uh, left over as just available budgeted reserves within the tourist development tax fund. Seven, when you say that, uh, 7,409,258. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Stefan, of that seven million, seven point four million dollars uh, some of those could be spent on public facilities if those public facilities were convention center, sports facility, et cetera, right? Uh, yes, sir. I, I believe so. Okay. So and certainly uh, special projects and things like that that the board may, may need to do or okay. absolutely, as okay. well as marketing. So when you said there was, I forget the number, the two million something for public facilities, so were you that, just talking about out of the fourth and fifth? That is out of the fourth and fifth cent. Okay of the carry four dollars. Okay. You, will you repeat that number again, that two million? But tell two. me <laughs> the relationship between the 3.5 million under the public facility restricted reserve and the 2,387 that you just happened to mention. Yes, sir. So basically this plan is, is supporting a $3.5 million allocation from the 4th and 5th for a, a public facility restricted reserve of the available carry forward dollars that are coming forward, which is part of that 11.1 .1 that you would see here at the top. We have an available 2,387,985. Toward that 3.5 figure. So it's the 3.5 is over what period of time? Um, kind of the way that I envision that, uh, Mr. Reeves, would be uh, this is what we have from the carry forward that can go toward it, but ultimately, whatever in the fifth cent is going to go toward this 3.5 and it's gonna be outright budgeted as an ongoing reserve. And we address that a little bit later. So. Well, but I'm, I'm, so when you ask- what, Whatever comes from the fifth cents are gonna go in per commission action. Yes, it'll be part of the, of the, of the county's budget going forward, but ultimately it'll be budgeted in reserves. The fifth cent. Yes, oh. sir. Correct. So the county commission has stated that they want to, they do not currently want to spend the fifth cent. They spent it the first year through the unified budget, and then after that, that yeah. was part of the deal was then to reserve it. Correct. Uh, this plan that we're looking at and we're discussing is 
putting those funds into this uh, public facilities reserve uh, that we're going to make the recommendation to the county commission if approved at this council uh, under this allocation. And those are funds that are current. These are funds that we're talking Do about. Do you know currently. specifically what you're going to make a re re recommendation for? He, yes, we're going to have that discussion later on in the agenda. Um, Wait a minute. Are you thinking a particular project? Oh, no, uh, no, no, not a no. particular project. It's going to be in reserve um, so that when there is a particular project or upgrade or something like that, the dollars are there. Show me and where the 1.3 million is that we normally would pay on the Civic Arena. The 1.5 million that we pay to the Bay Center? Those are for operational expenses. No, that, that's we, we were going to pay debt, and then we got through paying debt. If I, if I recall, Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we said that we would go with a fifth cent for the first year, and we would distribute some of that money based on COVID shortfalls. And then the second year with a fifth cent, we would put it into a reserve fund in case things like that happen again. COVID, hurricanes, those types of things. So we would have a better plan going forward with a fifth cent down the road. Is that correct? Which, which no. has nothing yeah. to do no. with my no. question. No, the fifth, the fifth cent is reserved for public facilities. That's okay, public facilities. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So okay. the, the 1.3 million that we were using several years ago to uh, exhaust the debt on the base center that's right. uh, okay. is just now that. part of the overall yeah. collection. Yes. And it's going to be part of the unified budget, right? That part goes into marketing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Y well, mm -hmm. it's just part of the overall budget. There's one point. I mean, there's, and we can get it, once we get into the budget, we can discuss that um, in more, in greater detail, but there's revenue that's all total, the total collections, and those are allocated under the different expenditure buckets. Yeah. That 1.3 just, sort of got absorbed with that overall budget. Mm -hmm. That first year that after we exhausted the debt was when we hit COVID and we did not hit the collections That's what it was. that we were budgeting and used to. And so that money just sort of got dissolved into other cuts here and there across the board. So the plan to use that 1.3 for a specific facility is gone. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm not sure that there was. Well, I, I saw it on the uh, Sports Association somewhere along the line where somebody had put forth a sports complex and funding from that 1.3 million. There were there have been several requests for the use of those funds but they were never allocated by this board or the county commission. Well, if we've got a public facility that we're concerned about that is funding, then why wouldn't we want to take some of that 1.3 million and fund it up? So what we did since then was levy the fifth cent and the county commission has said, let's put the entire fifth cent towards that budget, which is Just much like greater than the 1.3. Said, you let David Bear get hold of that fifth cent, and he'll spend it on wine, women, and song. I can think of no greater expense. And we were grateful. All right, back. To, all right, let's go. Let's get back to business. Uh, so, um, does anybody have any questions for? Stefan. I do. Yes, the the 2,8, the 2,8,759. Yes, ma'am. What is that again? That is net of the 11.1 .1 less the expenses okay. um, within those categories and then less that final $500,000 okay. allocation uh, to America's Cup. Very good. Okay. No problem. And so, Stefan, under the, the public facility restricted reserve 3.5 million, 
is showing just fourth and fifth, and you're saying that is of just fourth, fifth, that's eligible is 2,389,000 or 387,985. Yes, sir, and that is what is available that has not currently been allocated to the, to the, the second uh, uh, unified budget increase that we did. So those are available dollars that, that currently exist, again, left of that fund balance. So we have roughly 2.4 toward the, the uh, 3.5. Okay. Let me ask, I, I could have sworn I asked that same question you got 3.5 million is a projection mm -hmm. right and you've got from that very source on hand 2 million 87 985 okay how could i spend that 2 million 300,000 if I've got to keep it in the pot. Well, my understanding of the intent of the council and what they've been meeting on is this is supposed to be a reserve and not to be spent until council approves a specific project. Correct. And when did the council approve that? <laughs> we haven't yet. We're going into reserve. We're going to start saving. So on our agenda today, no, no, Jim. I, I asked when the council approved that. Oh, they have not. We are, we're, we're the council, they're the commission. Yeah, we, we, we will vote on it today to take it to them. I'm all in favor. I just want to understand. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, Stefan, uh, the, if we didn't just have fourth, fifth, if we had one through five available for public facilities, part of that 7.4 million could, that is the first through third cents, could also be used for public facility restricted reserves, correct? Potentially, but again, there are various restrictions within the other pennies, as, as you're very much aware. So uh, with the fourth and fifth, you know, we'd be re reasonably comfortable that those pennies are allowable. The other ones may not necessarily be, depending on what we're what actually going is. to do. But if, if today we recommend putting 3.5 million into that reserve as part of this overall plan. To get to 3.5, we would have to take some of the one through three, and it could be noted that it's this dollar amount, the 1.2 million is roughly 1.2 million is first through third, and the, re the remainder is fourth and fifth. Correct, you, you could do that, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Bear, I probably yes. would recommend it probably be out of the third cent, you know, if, if we do that. Okay. So. All right. No other questions? Thank you, Stefan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bless you. Okay. Go back. Okay. So we skipped the public forum, uh, but I will open it back up to uh, public forum. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to anything on the agenda today? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, Steve West from the attorney, county attorney's office is going to give us a brief uh, Florida Sunshine Law presentation. Welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, seems like I was only here a few weeks ago, but it actually has been uh, more than a year since I last appeared before the Tourist Development Council, and it is a policy of our or, uh, office to uh, provide a brief training session to the Board of County Commissioners and also all the subordinate boards and committees and councils that serve underneath them. And so I will be giving you a little bit of information just to remind you of two laws that apply to your service here, the Sunshine Law and the Public Records Act. I'm gonna be starting with the Sunshine Law today. Uh, the purpose of the Sunshine Law is to ensure that members of the public are able to observe and participate in legislative decision-making. So it applies to the Board of County Commissioners because they're the legislative body. But it also applies to you as the Tourist Development Council because you make legislative recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners. So 
It specifically applies anytime two or more of you are engaging in discussions or some other form of communication uh, on matters that may foreseeably come before the Tourist Development Council. Um, discussions and communications could include uh, not just the oral deliberations that you have here, but also uh, texts, emails, letters, telephone calls, virtually any type of communication between two or more of you might possibly be considered a meeting for purposes of the Sunshine Law if you're engaging in some sort of exchange of information on tourist development matters. And the Sunshine Law provides that if you're going to have a meeting, you have to first make sure that, that three, three criteria are satisfied. Uh, the first criteria is that you have to have published notice so that members of the public know when and where you're going to have your meeting. Uh, the second criteria is that you have to have your meetings someplace, like this chamber, that can accommodate members of the public who might want to attend. And the third criteria that you have to satisfy is that there has to be minutes taken, so that even if members of the public miss the notice or aren't able to attend the meeting, they have some record that they can look at to uh, know what was discussed and, and what action was taken by the Tourist Development Council. Um, but as long as you satisfy those three criteria, you will remain uh, in compliance with the Sunshine Law. If you don't satisfy those three criteria, then there are some penalties that might apply. Um, you can be removed from office, that's one. Uh, you can be subject to uh, fines of up to $500 for each violation. And for knowing violations, uh, you can be prosecuted uh, for a misdemeanor, which carries with it a potential penalty of up to 60 days in jail. So um, pretty simple. Um, the concern that I have with the uh, Sunshine Law, and maybe that you should have as well, is that even though it's, it is pretty simple and its requirements are not too burdensome, uh, it makes illegal certain conduct, which is otherwise pretty benign. And so I think it's pretty easy that you might, just by going about your lives, inadvertently find yourself in violation of it. So a couple of examples I can give you just to kind of keep in mind as you move through the world. Um, you all are here because you are probably engaged in some sort of um, community activity, business, social, uh, civic organizations, maybe a church, maybe a Mardi Gras crew, uh, maybe you just like to go to Blue Wahoos games. Um, so it would not be unusual for you in the course of doing those things to maybe run into one of your other fellow Tourist Development Council members. Um, and if you do, it would be normal for you to greet one another and maybe engage in some small talk about things you have in common, which of course would include your service here on the Tourist Development Council. But if you allow your conversations to stray into that tourist development area, um, you could find yourself inadvertently violating the Sunshine Law because um, there wouldn't necessarily be notice published that you're going to be meeting at the Blue Wahoos game and probably wouldn't be anybody there taking down minutes of what you were discussing. Um, so just Keep it in mind, those are types of things that can get you in trouble with the Sunshine Law. Uh, another example, even here at this meeting, um, you could find yourself inadvertently uh, violating the Sunshine Law. For example, uh, let's just say the meeting starts to run long and you've been going for more than an hour and you all decide to take a break for 10 minutes, maybe stretch your legs and go use the restroom. Um, if two or more of you continue your discussions about a tourist development matter while you make your way into the restroom, um, potentially that's a Sunshine Law violation because there's no notice being published that you would continue your meeting there in the restroom. And even if it was a small crowd, probably about half of the people that might want to attend wouldn't be in the restroom with you and there's nobody there taking minutes down of what you're discussing. So um, again, Probably very benign conduct that you wouldn't think about, but it is a way that you could potentially find yourself in violation of the Sunshine Law. 
So um, let me leave you with just some recommendations. Uh, don't talk with each other unless you're sitting in the faux leather seat that you are right now. And you, you can do it in a way that everybody uh, can hear and see you do it. Um, if you do happen to run into each other out in town and you have to talk with each other, um, just try to keep your conversations limited to something other than what would be considered a tourist development issue. And if you have any questions about what you can and can't do uh, under the Sunshine Law or Public Records Act, as I'll discuss in just a moment, um, please feel free to give our office a call. There's um, always going to be an attorney there during business hours that can help you out, even if I'm not there. Uh, all of the attorneys have uh, an, a board that they've been assigned to to give a similar presentation. And so as long as there's a, an attorney there, there should be somebody there that can help you out with Sunshine Law questions. Are there any uh, questions you have now on the Sunshine Law before I move into the Public Records Act? Okay. Uh, Public Records Act is the other law that we'll be discussing. The purpose of that law is to ensure that members of the public um, have access to public records. And public records are very broadly defined under the law. It includes um, not just the traditional paper documents that you might think of, um, but virtually anything that is sent or uh, received in the course of government business, regardless of whether it's paper or some other form of medium that is used to preserve information, that would probably be considered a public record under the Public Records Act. So that would mean uh, not just um, uh, paper documents, but also electronic documents, texts, emails, uh, things of that sort, audio recordings, video recordings, photographs, all of those would be used or could be used to preserve information in. And if it's sent or received in the course of your government service, it would probably be considered a public record. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, um, but for your purposes, um, I would consider just about everything that you receive or generate in the course of your service to be a public record. And if you have any questions about whether an exception applies, you can, again, give, us, give our office a call. Um, but if you do have a public record uh, in your possession, the public probably is going to have the opportunity to access that. And they don't necessarily have to go through any formal process to get it. They don't have to make their request in writing. They don't have to have a good enough reason to look at a public record, it's enough that they say, I want it. And if they do say, I want it, that triggers your obligation to make it available. And really, the only delay that you should take to make that available is whatever is reasonable to get it for them. Um, so um, again, pretty simple, um, but the penalties for not complying with that uh, obligation are similar to those for the Sunshine Law. So uh, my recommendation to you that I will leave you with is don't have public records. Um, if you do receive anything or generate anything in the course of your service on the board, um, when you don't actually have to have it in your possession, then turn it over to the clerk. Um, there's no reason for you to keep files of your own. I think that would be more practical. Uh, for public records purposes, just to turn everything over when you're done with it to the clerk. And that way, if anybody says, I want it, you can say, I don't have it. I gave it to the clerk. So um, with that, I will conclude unless there are any questions on the Public Records Act. Does anyone have any questions? No? All right. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, Steve. All right, uh, moving on, the agenda. Next item is the review and approval of the meeting minutes. And we had two different meetings. We had the April 12th uh, TDC meeting, and we also had the May 17th uh, TDC budget workshop meeting that we have minutes uh, that are here. Uh, does anyone have any objection as they are presented? No objection, then let's show them moved. No, we're moved. We moved on those, but on, on the next items, on the, uh, the budget and the reserve committee. Thank you. 
Um, next on the agenda is status of funds available. Um, we heard from uh, Stefan and County OMB, but uh, Mike Davis, would you like to come up from the clerk's office? Oh, Stefan, come on back. Stefan, sorry. Sorry, Council, not trying to steal our clerk's thunder. But um, <laughs> since I'm about to scoot, um, I did just want to make a note. Uh, great job on the budget that you prepared for, for the council discussion today. We're You and I are very, very, very close. We've got like 400 bucks, I think. So, uh -oh. so good job on that. There are still, I just want to point You'll out. You'll need to find your error. <laughs> <laughs> Yours are, great, are really good roundings. So, um, but anyway, there may be some, some just minor differences just because we're still finalizing some personnel and some other things like that, but we're still going to be really close. I just wanted to point that out before, before I head out the door. Great. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon, guys. Good to see everyone. Hope everyone's enjoying their summer. It's hot. It's my, uh, and FYI, Michael Davis, CPA Treasury Manager. And, oh, it's not switched to PDF. Okay. So, let's start with the streak continues. We're at 14 straight consecutive months, um, which the streak started uh, as of April of 2021 of record-breaking months. And, and uh, it is also an interesting statistic to know that even if we didn't increase from the four to five percent, we still would have beat, uh, broke the record every single one of those 14 months. So th things are looking good. Um, now, I, ran, I created this report as of June 15th, which is just about a week ago. And as of June 15th, our collections were right at $10.6 million. I did rerun, and June's collections as of June 15th were only $112.8,000, um, which you would see on this page right here, and I'll highlight it. There's the $112.8,000. But I re-ran the numbers this morning to, to give us a, a much uh, closer projection. And we are at uh, $1.8 million now as a, that we've collected in the last week. So our total collections for the month of June right now are about $1.9 million. So we, which would bring our total collections um, pretty much as of today to about $12.5 million for the year. I would like to highlight just a few of um, our larger expenditures that we that we have done thus far this year. We've uh, Visa Pensacola has has gotten about 5.8 million dollars to use for marketing and, and those efforts. Our base center has received uh, about 1.1 million dollars so far. We have uh, spent about 812,000 on beach-related projects, and out of that. Um, it's really down to three categories. Uh, beach access four is about 269,000. Um, we had the beach ball painting for 220, about 224,000, and then um, beach pavilions for another 320,000. So the, that's where you kind of see the beach. You see the beach access here for the 269, and then the 543 is the combination of the beach ball and the beach pavilions. So that would put our cash available before assigned and committed projects, which, well, Stefan's gone now, but um, where he kind of broke everything down, but it would, before all of his assignments, it would have been $16.4 million as of June 15th. Our, our trend analysis does highlight as well, kind of like I was talking about that, those 14 month, um, that streak right now, you can kind of see here all the changes from the prior year when it's one to four cents. It should be noted that um, as of the time of the report that we had $10.6 million. And if we did the exact same moment through June of last year, we would have had about 9 million. So we would have had $1.6 million uh, larger than last year. But if you include the additional million that I said as, as of this morning, then we are at uh, 12.3 million, so 3.3 million dollars larger, and a 36% increase over the exact same time frame as last year. 
So things are looking good, and I'm sure, and it should be noted that although today is the 21st, because yesterday was a holiday, that um, the deadline is through tonight. Today. Okay. So we're, st we're still collecting, and I'm, I would imagine that number is still gonna go high, higher, and we'll have a few people send some checks, and we usually get some large checks in. So they'll pro they're probably in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we hope not. <laughs> so, interest. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Mike? No. Uh, Mike, I have one quick question. On Absolutely. The, the beach access expenditure, yep. the 269, that was encumbered in last year's budget, correct? So that correct. didn't come out of the current year's cash flow. I mean, it came out of the cash flow, but it came out of last year's encumbrance. Last correct. year's budget. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we, we paid the bill this year. Yes. Yep. But the others, the beach ball and the pavilions, that was this, year. this year's. Yeah. Yep. That was the special beach projects. Yep, exactly. Okay. And I could build something that would reflect that in here. If that is if that's relevant information to you guys, I can I can make it. That would it. be great. Yeah, if okay. you could if you don't mind doing that, that'd be great. Yeah, I wouldn't mind at all. I'll okay. I'll put something together and and I'll uh Next time I present, you guys say, hey, yay or nay. And okay. there, if there's any other changes you guys want on here, let me know because I want to make sure I'm giving you guys the best information uh, I, can, I, I can provide. Okay. So all this I create in Excel. Um, so Great. Okay. So Thank just you let me so know much. if there's anything you guys are looking for. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, right. my pleasure. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, next item on the agenda is the uh, proposed 2023 TDT budget. Um, and in, I don't know if it's in your packet or not. No. Shauna, you didn't happen to send that out, did you, or Tina, to anyone or make copies? What is it? The, the projected budget this one is it no no that's last that's the current year not the proposed okay thank you yeah michael i did want to say i also did a, a forecast um and just based off of a very conservative approach of 15% for the uh, next three months, which is low, but I know things are starting to look a little strange with uh, the economics, but even um, if that, if we stay on that 15% forecast, I would, I'm projecting we'll uh, make over 22 million for the year. Oh, great. That's amazing. So thank you. Yeah. We, should, we should bring Rick Harper up to this. <laughs> well, since, uh, while Shauna is out, making copies for us of that. Um, let's move on to the next item, the TDT restricted reserves, which we were already briefly discussing, but yes. Shirley. Everyone should have um, the paper that we were just looking at with Stefan, the TDT restricted marketing reserve. And basically what our committee and uh, was set forth to do was to form um, and request dollars to develop a recommendation to implement an annual restricted reserve of TDT dollars. This past year, um, or two years ago with the pandemic, um, we saw what happened of not having any reserves. And we saw that the people, uh, our neighbors to the east and to the west of us, kept right on going without any problems. And unfortunately visit Pensacola and Pensacola uh, sports there was some uh, different uh, cuts that had to be made to staffing and so forth so we don't want to get in that position again so and fortunately right now we're pretty flush with cash so it's a good time to be talking about this and what we're thinking of doing what we're hoping to do is to 50 percent of of the budget that's carried over fund 108 and that's the fund that Stefan was talking about in the above numbers that we um, we 50 percent is carried over and we just keep carrying over because that's what they uh, that's what they operate out of 
but then we take 25% to the unified budget operation. We take 15% to the unified budget restricted reserve with 5 million caps with restrictions and 10 million, I mean, I'm sorry, 10% to the special event restricted reserve with the $2 million cap. And also, we are suggesting that we put aside $5 million, I mean, I'm sorry, 500,000 for beach renourishment with a $5 million overall cap. Um, that way, when it's time to renourish, we have dollars set aside, SRA, SRI will have dollars set aside, and then the state will hopefully be matching what we contribute jointly. So that is the thing that we're saying. Now, on the second page, it kind of explains, it, it does explain the marketing restricted reserve account restrictions. We're saying that all reserve accounts should be maintained in accordance with the Scambia County policy. Access to the restricted reserves must be made with the request to the Tourism Development Council, and the intended use must be within the guidelines of the state and local statutes. If it's approved by a majority of the plus one of the TDC, then it goes to the county commissioners to be approved by a super majority vote. That way, we've got everybody buying in on hopefully what, uh, what we want to try to do with the, yes. That's a recommendation, but we're hopeful that the um, commission will accept this plan as we have asked. So this is our, this is our committee's recommendation for this body to vote upon. The unified budget, what we're hoping with those, the reserve funds, um, pretty much the same thing that money's on deposit in this fund with the approval of the Scambia County Board of Commissions with a supermajority vote with a recommend, recommendation from the TDC Council may be used to, to the effects of natural or other disaster, including a pandemic, any unanticipated adverse financing of capital projects, economic downturn, anything that comes along that we were not planning for it will mitigate those uh, effects. The special event restric restricted reserve is available for a one-time unique and unexpected and unbudgeted events. The events must be significant tourism or marketing opportunity for Escambia County. Uh, we just had one this past week at mm -hmm. Five Flags Speedway mm -hmm. that was uh, CBS um, broadcasted. Reoccurring events are only eligible for these funds one year as seed money or for a unique circumstance. Special events must complete applications for review and approval through the appropriate <coughs> unified budget agency, depending on the type of the event. General events go through Visit Pensacola, Art and Cultural through ACE, and Sporting through Pensacola Sports. Approval of funds will require a vote of majority plus one from the TDC Council and a supermajority vote from the Board of County Commissioners. Event funding will be on a reimbursable basis unless approved otherwise as above. A sliding scale of funding based on proposed versus actual performance may be applied to a special event, meaning um, if you're telling us you're going to put 10,000 heads in beds and you put 1,000 heads in beds, you're not going to get the entire amount of money that you've asked for. Um, marketing restricted reserve. Um, again, it has to come through a request to the Tourism Development Council, and their intended use has got to be within the state and local statutes of what the ta how can the taxes be spent. And then again, if approved by a majority plus one of the TDC, the funds must also be approved by the county commissioner. Uh, hey, by John, super majority. Do we really need a majority plus one? That's what we discussed. Oh, a majority plus one. Um, a majority. Yeah. Let's see what you're saying. Plus one, but we can talk about a majority that if there's seven of us voting, five we got to vote for. 
That's what we were talking. I mean, we were hoping to get the majority plus one, but I, I see where it is confusing. Well, it's not confusing if you define it as a majority plus one additional member. Mm -hmm. you know, just, we're talking about how hard it is to get it out. I want to know how we determine. We want to make it hard to get out. I mean, we want, if somebody's got a legitimate use for it, then we want, I think everybody would buy into it. I said, we're talking about how hard it is to get it out. I have a couple of questions about how hard it is to get it in. Okay. $5 million on a assumptive, repetitive market. In other words, I want to know. Yeah. How long is it going to take us to get there? Well, no. I mean, why $5 million and why not $7 million or $3 million? I'm, I'm just. It was just a figure that we felt like $5 million would give us something to work with. Okay. So, so and at the committee meeting, they all they discussed that amount as well, <clears throat> and that number came out because they were looking at what happened during COVID, what was the overall loss of revenue, and as which was about three million dollars of TDT that we lost because of COVID. What would happen as as the numbers continue the to grow? The worst case scenario. We had a pandemic. Based on it. Hurricane, history would be yes was about five million would cover would right. cover it three okay. million was the pandemic the bridge and a hurricane a hurricane and then a bridge yeah. uh and so what could possibly be worse uh for tourism there could always be something i don't want to yeah. say nothing so now what is the 108 fund 108 that's the that is the fund the county's fund for tourist development tax that is that's everything there. in that that is fund 108 is the tourist development tax so when it comes in the clerk collects it and puts it into that fund that is the accounting fund number 50 percent to reoccurring fund 108 balance carryover no cap now what does that mean so the carry over is our funds that were collected and not spent by the end of the year those are the carryovers they carry it over into next year uh, and so um, fund 108 is the tourist development tax and so anything in the tourist development tax that was not spent that moves forward 50 percent of it is going to that budget line it's going up. to where stay in that account it stays into fund 108 okay. so 50 percent just goes into the fund unrestricted and it gives them money to be able to work with um, in the fund. Okay. A million dollars, just say. And it, it, it's in fund 108. It hadn't been expended. Okay. If 100% of the money's in there, what is... What does 50% mean? So of the carry, if a million dollars is, is unspent, carried forward, 50% uh, of it stays in fund balance, one, in fund 108, unrestricted. But, it, but in all, it's all of it in fund 108? It is, but, it, but we're saying 50% of it stays unrestricted. Then 25% of it goes to the unified budget operation. 15% goes to the unified budget restricted reserves and 10% goes to special event restricted reserves. And so in those, or, and then, so those three, the 25, 15 and 10% line items, once those things reach their caps, 
the rest of it goes into Fund 108 unrestricted. And, there is no and, cap. And two, the $2 million cap was just another. That's right. Out of the air, kind of. Yes. Yes. That's it. Well, just we talked about events that we've had, and we felt like that's a, a, a significant amount of money to have in a reserve for that. Okay. Let me ask you one trick question. <laughs> if one? the 15 gets to five, and the two million gets to two, what do you do with that 25 percent? So that then goes to the fund 108 balance unrestricted. So more than 50% goes into that fund once those other funds hit their cap. And we may have to but, readjust this. But that this doesn't say time. that, does it? Well, it says no cap, so it can continue to grow. But yes, you're right. It doesn't say that. Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, if I'm I like. okay. <laughs> Um, Commissioner, I, I, I like it. It's a solid plan, but I have a question about the special event restricted reserve. Uh -huh. um, when it says a sliding scale of funding based on proposed versus actual performance may be applied to the special event applications, I like that. But um, when you mentioned heads and beds, with Airbnb and VRBO and now uh, camping facilities, I know uh, I was at the race on Saturday. Um, had the opportunity to actually stay in a hotel nearby there, and I was astonished. I was amazed at the lack of drivers, racers, people affiliated at the hotel. I asked the staff and they said, no, no, they're not staying here. I think, um, you know, a lot of them were staying at Airbnbs, VRBOs. Oh, yeah. I think there might have been some infighting about rates. Mm -hmm. Some of the hotels on 29 were charging 400 a night and there was no discounts given. And I think that was wow. a point of consternation. So these guys just said, okay, we're going to go on Airbnb. And that's what they did. So whatever we do so on that, and your RV parks, yeah, a lot. and some of them actually, some of them actually stayed at Five Flags, which is fine because they pay TDT tax. Sure, See, sure, I'm, sure. I'm agnostic. If they stay in a hotel, that's great. Right. They stay in an RV park as long as they're paying they TDT, TDT tax. Right. So, what I'm saying here is, whatever we want to apply as a metric, let's base it on TDT collections and find a way to track it, uh, not just call the hotel operator and say, hey, how how was business the other night? Because that's not going to, because as we saw from the race, if they're going to charge $400 for the Palm Inn on Highway 29. These guys ain't going to stay there. Right, right. You got to. Uh, my understanding was there were some discussions, saying, "Hey, we're going to bring a big nationally televised thing. You know, how about giving us some kind of a break on these rooms, and we'll fill them up. We'll fill them up. Right. Courtyard by Marriott, brand new hotel, wasn't even full, and I didn't see anyone from the race there. So, uh, right. and it's a beautiful it's facility. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, whatever metric. Okay. First of all, what we ought to do is work with the hoteliers on these events. And we should throw out some deals, yeah. fill up the hotels. Yeah. But if we're not gonna, I wouldn't make that the be all end all. Let's, right. let's look at the total well, TDT collections. And I think the other thing um, with that is, is say somebody came, they came to us and they said it's gonna be CVS. And then all of a sudden we get um, a local network or something that wasn't nationally televised. That again, they, have a met, they, they sold it to us as being a nationally televised event if it doesn't come through, right. then that's, so it's not just heads and beds. I said that, but it could be. Who's, who's gonna develop those metrics and are we gonna do that? Um, Cause I, I wanna crack at that. Sure, uh, that'd be great. Well, I just, <laughs> yes. Have it, sure, yes. So, I always thought you were a fair man. I am. And you know, <laughs> you know that RV places pay the tax and like we don't it. spend any money Is to advertise it. I like RV parks. I like yeah. all Airbnb pays TDT do they? too. Do the they RBM. pay it? I didn't know. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is the plan um, of how what we our committee came up with. Um, now we'll be changing these front figures to get what Stefan had told us um, changing. But does anybody else have any further questions about the numbers, the dollars? And, and Mr. Reeves, you're correct on some of these caps and so forth, but we just had through lengthy discussions in our committee trying to figure out what was going to help us get reserved, have money to for future events. Okay. 
Shirley, I just want to say thank you for bringing this forward. I think it's smart. And once we get to the caps on each of these funds, we don't have to worry about the next hurricane coming through and because exactly. that money will be there. So, exactly. you know, I, do you need a motion on this? I mean, yes, I, I mean, we will entertain a motion. Okay. I, I would move that we move this forward and send it, uh, send it forward and okay. approve it. Second. All right. All right. So chairman Bergash, commissioner Bergash made the motion. Mr. Rivera seconded the motion. Uh, is there any other discussion from TDC members? Uh, just other than this is a great plan, Charlie. You guys got some work into this. This is amazing. Well, it really you. is. It's something that we've talked about for a long time up here, and uh, moving forward with this is an absolute uh, gem for our community. It really well, is. Thank, thank you. you. And yeah. I need to thank um, Mary uh, and Enri Enriquez. Enriquez. Enriquez with um, Ace, Darren Schaef uh, Schaefer with Vis. Pensacola, Lauren McCollars with um, Pensacola Sports, and Mitch Patel, uh, Tish Patel. They were all spent, uh, committed a great amount of time, along with Ray Palmer and David and Stefan. I mean, it, it was a collective effort, and sure. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, yeah thank you, Shirley. So before uh, we call for the vote, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this? Uh, to this plan as presented to this motion. Right, Palmer. Uh, and I just and I don't know if we need to get after the meeting. Ray, pa Ray Palmer, Pensacola Sports, 4323 White Leaf Court. Thank you. To your point, just want you to understand, those metrics are built. That's why we want them, these special events, to come through my grant wow. program or their visits grant program, because that's how we grade grants every single day, Commissioner. We've built the metrics, mm -hmm. and it's way more than just heads and beds. And so those metrics absolutely are built in place. That's why it's easy for us to use this system as, as putting it in place. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? No? All right. Uh, we will call for the vote, and I've, I've asked Shauna if she would actually call the roll. So uh, the, the motion was to approve as presented uh, the plan for restriction, excuse me, for the reserve fund plan. Uh, and Shauna, if you'll just call, do the roll call. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes and support, no against. Well, we'll start with you, Mr. Bagosh. How yes. do you vote? Yes. How about you, Mr. Reeves? Thank you for it. Okay. How about you, Ms. Cronley? Yes. Mr. Bear? Yes. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Moore? That'll seal the deal, yes. That, that's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. All right, that uh, motion. We're, we're assuming that's not chiseled in stone. That is the allocation. I'm not talking about how hard it is to get the money out. I'm not sure I'm I understood not your, you. <laughs> your comment. Uh, if we wanted to make a change, we wanted to up the five million, or we wanted to lower the five million, or we wanted to make changes, I assume that that part of it's not chiseled in stone. I'm okay with the other chiseling you've done on how hard it is to get it out. So yes. I'm not talking about getting it out. I'm yeah. talking about just sure. changing the levels, moving it around. Yes, I, yes, I think th that's great. Yeah, I think uh, we have the authority to amend what we just created. Um, so, yes. The majority plus one. <laughs> that's right. Yes. <laughs> oh, I know it would never happen. <laughs> okay, uh, next on the item uh, on the agenda is uh, back to the 2023 TDT budget, proposed budget. Um, everyone has one now in front of them. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the same document that we looked at um, at our workshop that we finished um, discussing at the end of the workshop. I cleaned it up to try to make it look better, but those are the same, same numbers. Um, so as you can see, and I'll just run down it real quick. As you can see, uh, the county is projecting to collect 
uh, $3,750,000 per um, penny uh, of the tourist development tax. So the first three, uh, one through three will be $11,250,000. Uh, the fourth is $3,750,000 uh, and the fifth would be the same, $3,750,000. Uh, the proposal was to, um, of the reserves in the fund balance, uh, to put an additional $1,625,000 into the budget for, that was the fifth set um, that had been collected that was not allocated uh, for the unified budget. Uh, so the total TDT collections, including that reserve fund balance, is $20,375,000. Uh, and from there, um, we have to take immediately off the top uh, the statutory holdback at 5% of the, and that is 5% of the actual one through five cent collection that does not include the reserves fund balance. Um, so it's of the 18 million, I forget the number, 18 million 750, uh, 750,000. <clears> Excuse me. Uh, so that 5% is statutorily required to be held back. Uh, the fifth cent reserves, that is the, the, the entire fifth cent that the county commission has said that they want to put into reserves. So that is taken out. Uh, and then the county administrative costs at 3%, and that is the uh, clerk of the court's administrative fee for managing this process. Is it a real 3% or is it an actual? That is the 3% of the total collections. The statute, as we've discussed here before and the Auditor General is reviewing, uh, currently is whether or not the clerk has a, um, an actual cost analysis done on what it costs to administer the program because that is, that is the amount that the statute allows is the actual cost of administration with an amount not to exceed 3%. Uh, over the last few years, uh, there has been an allocation at the 3%. <clears throat> this number represents 3%, uh, if, uh, which is significantly greater than last year's allocation and significantly greater than the year before because these numbers continue to go up. Uh, there was obviously an increase probably in activity due to the levying of the fifth cent, uh, but it was levied last year and this, and they were able to administer it at a lower level. If uh, right now we have this 3%, if this um, council, anyone wants to make a change to that, we can, we can do that before we approve this uh, to recommend to the board of county commissioners. Um, but that is a, a discussion point that we can, if somebody would like to do that, uh, we could entertain. Uh, but those three items total uh, administration is $5,250,000. Um, so the total budget, which would be collections minus administration, uh, is $15,125,000. And that is what is available to be spent through uh, the Board of County Commissioners uh, and administration uh, projects, the uh, outside agency allocations, and the unified budget um, allocations. And those three different categories, you can see there's the one through three cents for the base center, 1.5 million. Uh, the beach mowing and Bob Sykes, I think it's just beach mowing now, is $125,000. Uh, marine resources is projected um, for $325,000 and the beach renourishment at $500,000. So the Board of County Commission allocation uh, would be $2,450,000 for those items. Uh, the next category is the outside agencies, uh, which includes the African American Heritage uh, for $50,000, the Naval Aviation Museum for $100,000, UWF Historic Preservation for $200,000, uh, the Sertoma Fireworks for $75,000, Summerfest for $75,000, and America's Magic at $500,000.
So total agency, um, outside agency, TDT, would be $1 million. Unified budget um, for uh, ACE would be $1,638,000. Pensacola Sports would be $962,000. And Visit Pensacola would be $7,800,000 for a total unified budget appropriation of $10,400,000. Uh, and those numbers are based on the MOU among those three organizations. Uh, so there would be, for those three categories, uh, county administration, outside agencies, and unified budget, that is a total of $13,850,000. So that would leave a 2023 surplus of $1,275,000. That is the, those are the same numbers we discussed at our workshop. Um, are there any comments or, or questions? Do you need a motion to approve? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, I approve the, the budget, the proposed budget for 2023. Okay, so, so um, on this motion, Mr. Josh, I have a uh, Well, hold on. Oh, wait, before, wait, before we call wait, for the wait, vote, we have discussion. Uh, okay. Some more discussion. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. so, Was it a motion like, for, for discussion or a motion to... Motion, motion to approved. approve the, okay, a motion. So we have on the floor a motion. And we got from, a second already. From, uh, and Commissioner Bergash. I just had a couple Shirley questions seconded. before we move forward. Uh, so now I'll open it up for comments or questions. Just discussion. a couple questions. Um, if we wanted to reduce this administrative cost from three to two, what is the process of doing that? If we made that decision or if we ever entertained that decision? Because the, the, the mark is at 3% or whatever the true cost is. Is that correct? That, whatever, that's been my understanding of this. The statute says whatever the a, actual cost you may allocate whatever uh, a percentage of a portion of the tax to the actual cost of administration up to three percent, not to exceed three percent. Yes, sir. Um, okay. R R yes, sir. Ronnie, let me just ask you this though. Yeah. I think I think it might be helpful. Yeah. If we would just get a breakdown of the costs. That's what I'm thinking. And and then Wait that way that. we've got that figure. And then if this fund grows exponentially, yeah. you know, we can track that because there's, there, there shouldn't be necessarily a correlation. I mean, right. the cost of labor is going up, but this thing is going up like a rocket. Right. So I'm with you, yeah, I don't, but, but I don't know that we should peg it to an, a percentage. I think we just need, we need someone, to, someone from the clerk's office, Mike Davis, how much does it cost for you guys to do what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, I, not to put you on the spot, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of. We, we, uh, I think there's inquiring minds would like to know. So, so, so while Mike's coming up, uh, Commissioner, I'd, in in his report that he provided to us earlier, uh -huh. the current year, the clerk admin, uh, three percent equaled four hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. But, right? but really we still don't know if it's an actual. Exactly. That is three so, percent. So, so but that, you can see it's a it's a hundred thousand dollars more. Correct. So, so what, what does it cost, Mike, to do what you guys do to yeah, provide so, the support? So it won't support? be it won't be the it won't be the 460 this year. It's going to be closer to what it was last year, at three 330, 330. 330. So, Okay, so we're gonna put Mike's number in and. 330. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mike. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I mean, we're um, we're also doing like a lot of automation and everything sure. like that to try to improve uh, efficiencies and things like that. Um, I'm I'm also a vice president of the Florida Tourist Development Tax Association for the entire state. Um, we have a meeting July 26 in Daytona, and so all of that we everyone in the state um, does comes together and we all work together on best practices on inefficiencies and we share ideas on all that kind of information. So Mike, back to the main question though. Yeah. So if so, we're not gonna plug in 562 grand cause that would be outlandish. It doesn't sound to me like you guys are gonna spend that much supporting this board. So 350 might be a number to plug in there. I think that's more realistic. All right, there you go, Ronnie. And there's your extra percent or more actually. Appreciate it. Thank you, so, so, Commissioner, you have the motion on the floor. Would you entertain that amendment? Just an amendment real quick on that motion. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have another point to speak to. Well, <laughs> do that first and then I'll... Fair enough. And it's okay. and, and, and it's just, a, it's kind of a housekeeping thing. We do it every year. Uh, Sertoma, I thought Sertoma was going to fall under the unified budget process. Hey, uh, do we have a motion on the floor? We do. And, we're, okay. and do we have an amendment to the motion? Uh, they said they wanted to wait. Yeah, yeah, it's, they it's wanted to wait on the amendment. It's, 
Yeah, it's okay. forthcoming on that. But I, I thought we were going to move. I, I don't see how we get <laughs> out of the frame. Of, right. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm fixing to give it to Commissioner and let him tie it up. Just finishing discussion among the members. Um, I thought we were going to use push put that under the unified budget process. And did we never do it, or did, did it never happen, or what happened? I mean, we talk about it each year about Sertoma, and we, we give Sertoma a ton of money to do the project, which is wonderful. And I always ask, what does the city have in the game? It's a city. It's down on the bayfront right there at the city. And the city, did, do you guys give Sertoma any money every year for the the project? Services. That, very good. They give services. I, I couldn't answer that question Fair enough. off the cuff here. Fair enough. Yeah. And that's okay. They only let county residents watch. Right, that's right. That's how it works. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. That's just housekeeping. Uh, well, Commissioner? Well, well, just real quickly to yeah. answer your question about the uh, Sertoma going under um, yeah. visit, it did uh, a few years ago, but then during COVID, that's right. okay. uh, during the pandemic, those funds were cut because that program okay. was, that's right. uh, was cut and then that. the very next year they asked to come back I remember that. directly under the as an outside agency versus coming under remember. visit Pensacola I do so remember. that's why they're not under visit Pensacola anymore um, and I would just respond about the city yeah what they put in they don't use any of these funds yeah, they just they send us two that's of their right. members we know that's just me. That's a, it's me poking, really, is all it is, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I sit, and I sit here and behave, but uh, I'll, take it up for you. I'll bring my poker next week. Uh, <laughs> that's next right. Meeting. Commissioner? So I'd substitute a motion. I move this uh, with the following amendments. We subtract uh, um, 212,500 uh, $212, from the proposed county administrative cost at 3%, reduce that number to 350,000, add the 212.5 to the surplus, leaving the surplus at 1.4875, 1,487,500, which balances your spreadsheet, and that would be my motion. Okay. And I second it. So is that an amended motion? That, that is the amendment to the motion, and but sure, our second. The county commissioners have to approve this what we are doing is making this is just a, a recommendation to the budget. Board of County Commissioners so today. Yes. Yes. So it could be. We'll have to see what happens. I got a feeling I got at least three votes, though. <laughs> okay, Did so, I say that? so today, what we're doing, this action is to make the recommendation of this right. budget to the Board of County Commissioners. So we have the motion, the amended motion, uh, which has been seconded. Uh, is there any other discussion sure. from the TDC members? No. Uh, I'll ask, is there any comment or uh, from anyone in the audience, from the public? Now would be the time. Nope, seeing none. Uh, now we will call for the vote, and I will ask Shauna to uh, do the roll call, please. Okay. Now, Commissioner Yes, ma'am. I'm voting yes. Thank you. Okay. How about you, Ms. I vote no. Not because I really feel that way, but I want to have a, you know, have to not listen to anybody. Yes. And I think it's going to pass. <laughs> Please. Oh, Miss Crawley, how about you? How do you do? Yes. And would you, Mr. Baird? Yes. Uh, Mr. Baird? Yes, ma'am. Even though Ronnie poked me, I'm still going to vote yes. <laughs> Right. Thank you. So uh, the motion passes. The motion carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is other business. And I didn't intend on any other business, but uh, Darren uh, with Visit Pensacola asked if he could please say a few words. Mr. Chairman, is there any more action items for today? There, there is not. Okay. So unfortunately, I have to take, uh, I have to take off, but I okay. appreciate your time. Right, thank, thank you, you sir. We just wanted to share some additional information. Uh, we received the uh, supplemental allocation that came from the remainder of the fifth cent, and we will, are putting that right into action. So Brian McCall, representing Showcase Pensacola, is gonna share that information with you. And then I just wanted to share a few notes that we're seeing as far as what uh, projections on uh, TDT for the rest of the uh, fiscal year.
close. Yeah, for, for really, real quick, we just the like like Darren said, we uh, they gave us eight hundred fifty thousand dollars to spend through from the supplemental uh, amount from May until the end of the fiscal year, and I think we're I think we were doing some good things to try to uh, maybe head off some of the fears we're feeling about the economy, and having this extra money I think is, is great to kind of address that and to. Uh, uh, carry through through the end of the fiscal year and, and extend the sh fall shoulder season. So the, the big part of that is we're doing a push in Atlanta. Atlanta's a very important market for us, but it's an expensive market and we can't usually do like broadcast TV. That doesn't fit well within our budget usually, but we are. We're going to do some broadcast TV and we're going to supplement that with some YouTube TV in that market. Uh, advertising on YouTube TV is something we've looking for uh, for a while. It's a, it's a growing uh, in popularity, so we, we that's kind of something of an experiment, but we're, we're looking to we're good to results from that. We're also going to boost the direct flight campaign. Uh, that's, that's ongoing, but we're going to put some supplemental money to that. And again, we pay attention to where the direct flights are coming from as those ships shift. Currently, D.C., Dallas, Denver, Houston, Indianapolis, Nashville, New York, and St. Louis. Uh, the other thing we're putting some additional money to is the interest market. Uh, and that by that mean it's niche is, is uh, just interest that, that people we can use to digital channels to reach that have shown online behavior to uh, indicate that they might be interested in these things like fishing, birding, uh, diving. Those are the new things we're adding. We had been running history, uh, craft beers, and dining messages. We're also going to do some uh, multi-market digital outdoor. This is not something we've done uh, in a while. Uh, we're looking at uh, Baton Rouge, Birmingham, Montgomery, Nashville, New Orleans, and Biloxi. Uh, that market, J Jackson, Houston, Tallahassee, and Dallas. We're, uh, multi uh, the, uh, the digital outdoor will be supplemented with connected TV that, that, that work together. So that's TV advertising over uh, streaming channels. And again, that, that's a way we can, we can hit these big, larger markets, but very focused targeting. We're also going to, we've, we've talked before about uh, snowbirds or winter visitors. We're going to start that a little bit earlier this year, try to, try to uh, build on that using these assets that we have. And we're also uh, going to do some support for Visit Pensacola's uh, visit to the Chago Air and Water Show. Uh, we're going to uh, do some car wraps, do some broadcast TV right around the, the uh, event, digital outdoor and geofencing of the uh, event itself and some support with what they're doing with some on the ground activation. So we just thought you might want to know what we're doing with the extra money we got. Uh, I think it, I think, I, I think this will give us some good results. And if you have any questions or Darren wants to say Thank you. So we just wanted to share that. And then on that last note with the Chicago Air and Water Show, uh, we're excited to do an activation along with the Naval Aviation Museum and Foundation. Um, if you're not uh, aware, they've developed a Blue Angel experience that is a 20, well, actually close to 30 foot long trailer that, that can be an activation at uh, different locations. And so Chicago Air and Water Show would be one of the first times it, it is be put into, put into action. So uh, it is a high end, very professional activation that uh, features the Blue Angels and draws attention to uh, Pensacola area, of course, the the Naval Aviation Museum as well. I showed this slide, wanted to put it up, uh, just to talk a little bit. This is uh, April receipts received in May, and we saw that that was, uh, was certainly an increase over last year. Um, and, but what we're seeing, and we just want to talk about briefly, is things are tightening up a little bit. We look at the month of May, and we look at the Smith Travel Research Report that just came out, um, and we're seeing for the first time um, in 15 months that our overall revenue and traditional lodging is down. It was down 4.7% for May, according to Smith Travel Research. However, when we look at vacation rental, uh, for the month of May, vacation rental revenue was up 11.6%. So when we, we look at TDT, we look at, 
at the whole county and, and whether it's traditional lodging, vacation rentals, camping, you know, all told that number is, is, is truly an important number. Um, so when we look forward in the next few months, we can do that in vacation rentals through uh, a reporting agency called Key Data. Can't quite do that with Smith Travel Research yet, but with Key Data we can. And we look at June and we look at July and those uh, months are again up. June right now is forecasted to be up 17%. July is forecasted to be up 4.3%, which is actually pretty good because it, it was down 10% for a long period of time. So what we are seeing is closer in reservations that are filling in. Uh, people are, uh, I think, with their concern about budgets and limitations and inflations. They want to make sure that uh, you know, their uh, weather and some of those things are coming into play, and so they're booking closer in. Um, and we're seeing uh, maybe a shift of some of our visitors going to vacation rentals where they can bring food and drinks and maybe offset some of their other travel costs. Um, so I think uh, May was down a little bit too because remember last year we've had both Pensacon and Mardi Gras in the month of May last year and now that was back in February so we did lose those room nights as well and had that kind of an impact. June looks up though, June looks strong as does July now is filling in. Um, so usually I'm not the one who forecasts higher numbers, but Michael's numbers of hitting close to $22 million in revenue, um, I came in at, uh, if, not, if, if all we do for the rest of the year is do just exactly the same number we did last year, we'll hit uh, 21240000 So with growth, which we will see, you know, that, that we will be very close to that $22 million dollar uh, total in TDT receipts. So based on our budget of 15750000 this year, you know, there's going to be a significant amount of extra TDT available in that 108 fund at the end of the, at the end of this fiscal year. And that's something that we do want to talk about. We can see the, the impacts and uh, some of the changing patterns of how people are going to travel, certainly as a destination that benefits from that drive market and our proximity to some major population centers. We want to add to our messaging about driving a, a drive or a vacation on a tank of gas. And so we've already tasked our agency, Showcase Pensacola, to look at additional campaigns that would help us drive more occupancy. ADR has been great, but we really need to be focusing on occupancy. So we already have them working on additional campaigns that uh, we'd be able to bring before the TDC um, in the future. And I just, there's a lot of exciting things going on that we had the SRX race, but uh, we also uh, uh, had an announcement just recently about the America's First Settlement Trail, which is the red line that you see in downtown Pensacola that eventually be transitioned from uh, painted to brick and have had a lot of interest in it already. And what's great about that trail, it's designed that we're able to track uh, the QR codes that people dial up on their phones to look at uh, different points of interest throughout the community. So um, there's a lot of potential here with the A1S trail and we're looking forward to sharing that in the future. Um, and we've been active, we got American Magic now in town. We just came back from a big trade show in Orlando, IPW. We had a lot of interest internationally, especially uh, in Northwest Florida and the Panhandle. And um, again, looking at a couple activations, including the Chicago Air and Water Show. We're excited about that, it'll be coming up in August. Thank what you. is what is your background as a statistician? As a statistician, I took st statistics in college. It's a quarter class. I got an A. Um, but reading uh, key data and the Smith Travel Research reports, I've been doing it for 20 years. For Pensacola, that's you know that's pretty good, damn good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other I'll questions for Dan? Adjourn. Thanks. Well, so we still have another item on the agenda. Uh, the other item is closing remarks. So, uh, Mr. Reeves, do you have any closing remarks? Other than you like to adjourn? Okay. Shirley, any closing no, remarks? No. no. Uh, I, well, Ronnie? No, thank you. Councilman? No, sir. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being here today uh, and continuing the good work to grow our tourist, tourism and our community. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thanks.